death is not thy holy name and thy holy word. We give you all of the praise and the glory. Oh, uh, yes, Lord, it all belongs to you. Thank you, O oh God, for having all power. O oh God, all power. All power, Lord God. It belongs to you. All power.
We're here to worship Him. We're here to praise Him. We're here to hear the Word of God. Amen. So feel free to praise Him, to magnify Him. We're going to go into our praise and worship service. Mother Pam Harris, let's receive her by saying amen. Come on, y'all, let's have some church.
that if I pass this mic around, I know that I will hear testimonies of miracles. I know that I will hear testimonies of healing.
We thank you, O oh God, for uh, waking us up even this morning and starting us on our way. Lord, we thank you for each and every one that's here on today, every family that's represented. Lord, we ask you to go to Indianapolis. Go right now to Riley Hospital, Lord. We have uh, grandkids and godsons and uh, Sister Darlene Hughes, great grandchild that's there. Lord, touch right now. Lord, we know that you are healer right now. You can do it before the surgeons do it. You can do it before the doctors do it. Lord, have your way, oh God. In the name of Jesus, touch, heal, deliver, set free. Right now, right now, right now. You are right now, God. And we believe you by faith. Lord, we thank you. You've done it before. And you can do it again. It's maybe impossible. It's impossible for man, but it is possible with you, oh God. Heal, Lord. Heal, heal, heal. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless the Reed family on today. Bless right now. Uh, the Shaw family. Touch each and every brother, each and every sister, the relatives, Lord, that mourn and grieve on this morning, Lord, that you would comfort them, that you would strengthen them. Lord, that you would bless them in a special way. That something be said, something that would be done to encourage their heart, even toward righteous living, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for our brother Gary Shaw, Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you for just knowing him. And Lord, we ask you to bless the church family today. In the name of Jesus, strengthen our hearts. Encourage our hearts, Lord. Lord, as we have lost our brother, Lord, we ask that you would bless each and every one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord, as we go into your word on today, which you have given me to give to your people, Lord, we ask that you would bless each and every hearer of the word. And who hears, uh, not only just hears, but to be doers of your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, today you are my strength. You are my strength today, oh God. And I thank you for strength. You're my strength. You're my strength. And you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, let's tell the Lord thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. It's all right to tell him thank you. It's all right to praise him. Glory be to God on today. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. I just feel like praying. Listen, amen. I, I feel like just praising God. Amen. I thank God and I praise God for being in the house of the Lord one more time. I'm thanking Him for being saved and sanctified, baptized, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that with fire. I'm just excited to be in the house of the Lord. I give honor to my lovely companion, my wife, First Lady Ross. Come on, give her a hand on this morning. To our church mother, Mother Mary came and to our, amen, it's all right. To our official missionaries, our parents, and our prayer and worship. To our elders and our ministers, uh, Elder Morrow, his companion, companion, and Mr. James, amen, his companion, our absence to all of our deacons, all of our deacon brothers, all of our sisters, and missionaries, everyone that make up this service. Thank God for the musicians. Come on, give the musicians a hand. Amen. They, they, do, they do musicians. Stuff and they also do sound and, and all of that. And I thank God for them. Amen. Deacon Ross and the crew that's over there. I thank God. Say amen for the multimedia team. Amen. God bless them. We'll talk a little bit further about that. But I want to thank, amen, uh, each and every one of my wife has said earlier. Thank God for those that are on Facebook, those that are on YouTube, those that are with us, amen, worldwide. We thank you for being with us. On today, down through these months, you have been with us, and I want to say thank you so much. Please share this uh, with somebody. Please let somebody know that we're on Facebook Live. Amen. I want to thank our guests, our visitors today that have made their way out uh, to be with us. Uh, one of our Notre Dame uh, students, her name is Salem. I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name. I'm just waving your hand and I say thank you so much. For being with us, God bless you. Amen. She happened to run into one of our, she was walking, she happened to run into one of our, our great deacons, Deacon Carl McGee, and he made sure that we had contact with her. And we thank you, thank you so very much for being with us. Also, amen, by way of Arkansas, we thank God for LaCarla Denny. 
shifted in Joshua, the third chapter, dealt with watching. It basically dealt with, amen, follow the leader. The leader would tell them, amen, all the priests, when you see the priests, when you see the Ark of the Covenant move, get yourself ready, and you get ready to move. You get ready to shift. In other words, follow the leader. That's what it pretty much dealt with in that particular segment. Get yourself in position. Get your mind set. Get your mind prepared because we are going to shift from one location to the next location. We're going to shift, amen, higher in the Lord. Somebody say amen. Talk to me. When, it, when it's time to shift, it is not time to doubt. It's not time to doubt God. When God says it's time for a shift, it's a season of shift. It's not time to doubt God, but it's time to trust Him. There is no time for fear. There's no time for doubt, and there's no time for fear, because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Let's look at this doubt just for a minute. Amen. To call, when you doubt, you call into question the truth. You call into question the truth. What is true? Amen. God can do anything but fail. Amen. Amen. What's impossible with man is possible with God. Do not doubt God. When God tells you to do something, just go ahead and get up and do it. Doubt causes a sense of uncertainty, a lack of confidence. Doubt is really distrust. Not to believe or not to accept, in our case, the word of God. Not to accept, not to believe what God has in store for us. Amen. God is a life changer. Listen, I want you to look at Mark's. Write this down so you can look at it a little later. And I want to talk about Mark 9 and 23 and 24. And to set the stage, there was a father whose child, amen, and he said had a dumb spirit. In other words, he was falling at the mouth. He was gnashing of teeth. Amen. He would fall to the ground. He would try to throw himself into the fire, throw himself into the water. He would try to destroy himself. In other words, amen, he was possessed with the devil. Amen. And so the father went to, the father went to the disciples. And the disciples could not help the father nor the son. So he brought the child to Jesus. And he told Jesus, he said, I went to the disciples, but they could not do anything for me. And Jesus, you know what Jesus said? He said, oh, faithless generation. Yeah. Oh, faithless generation. How long should I be with you? How long should I suffer you? Bring the child unto me. And he's had a conversation. And Jesus said unto the Father, he had a conversation that's word third, the 23rd verse. He said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. All things are possible for you that believe. That believe what? That God is. That God is God. And God exists. That God can fulfill his promises. God can heal. God can deliver. God can set free at any time. All things are possible with God. He talking to the man, to the father. And 24 verse, I want you to get this. Take your time, get this. Write it down if you have to. And straightway the father of the child cried out. He said with tears in his eyes. He had tears in his eyes. He's, he's crying, he's crying out. He cried out. He said, Lord, I'm talking to Jesus. I believe. I believe. He said, I believe. But then he said, but help thou my unbelief. That little bit of portion, missionary medals, that little bit of portion that's back in the back of his mind that said, my child been like this for a long time. I really don't know, I'm doubting. If you really can't do it, I even ask your disciples. But all things are possible with God. If we believe, if we kick out the little bit of doubt, we kick out the unbelief. We kick out the not trusting him. We got to get rid of that and believe God with our whole heart. 
that all things are possible with God. And yes, the end of that story, the Lord did heal that boy. As we talk about right now, we're talking about shifting into second year by faith. Yeah. Where it is our faith? If you're going to shift the second year, you've got to have some faith. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, For we walk by faith, yeah. not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Because if we walk by sight, we never would move. We walk by sight, we never would get into second gear. We would let the storms of life stop us if we walk by sight. If we walk by sight, the clouds, amen, that are hanging over that are dark, we're darkening our path. I'm reminded of Peter when Jesus told him to come out on the water and he came out on faith, walking on the water. And soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus and he concentrated on the storms on the sea. He concentrated on the winds. He concentrated on the cloud. He began to sink into the water. He began to sink. We don't want to do that, but keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep focused on Jesus. And that takes faith. In order to get into second year, third year, it takes faith in God. Walking by sight will cause us to take our eyes off Jesus. We're going to talk about in just a few minutes, Abraham was shifting by faith. Abraham was totally relying on the move and the promises of God. One of the biggest keys to shifting into here, shifting into another location, shifting in the Lord is faith. Somebody say faith. Doubt and fear has no place and shifting and going forward. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, let's go to the main scripture in the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter, starting at the first verse. Let's look at Abraham, how he shifted in faith. The Bible says, Now the Lord said unto Abraham, said unto Abraham, yeah, now, uh, name did not change to Abraham yet. It says, Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Sometimes to shift gear, to go in the same gear, we have to get out of our comfortable space. Okay. What's comfortable for us? I'm, I'm comfortable on the pool pit. I'm, I'm comfortable sitting over in the missionary set. I'm comfortable sitting over in the deacon set. I'm comfortable sitting right here. Ah, but when it comes to shifting, Lord told Abel, you gotta get on up out of here. Get out of your comfort zone. Amen. And shift as the Lord wants you to shift. In other words, leave that home. Launch into the deep. Most of us, you will have to understand, have to begin to declutter some things before you shift. In order to shift. Right. Give you an example. If you got a closet and you got old clothes, you got clothes you ain't worn in five or ten years, and you keep shifting them to the back, shifting them over here. Put I'm gonna wear it one day. One day I'm gonna wear that extra large shirt. Brother Ray, I ain't never gonna get back in there. It's just <laughs> I gotta do something. I gotta begin to Declutter some things. Yeah. Some things I gotta put in the pile for the good with. Some things I gotta put in the pile to just throw away. I gotta begin to declutter some things. But let me tell you this. Sometimes you have to declutter some people. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right. So the juice is kind of quiet in here. It's kind of quiet. Sometimes you have to declutter from people. God told Abram, come on now. He told him, get out of your country. Get out of thy country. The people that you were born and raised with, come on. The people that are like you, the people that are kind, and from thy father's house. In other words, you got to, you got to go, man. If you want to shift, Sometimes you got to get rid of some things 
You got to get rid of some things in your life that's going to hold you back. You got to get rid of some people that's going to hold you back. When God tells you, when God gives you a vision, when God gives you a dream, when God tells you to go, when God tells you to shift, and that other person say, you sure is God? You sure? Maybe it's not God. That person saw a doubt in your head. Time to declutter. Verse number two, I will make thee a great nation. Now, here's what God wants us to do in verse number one. And in order to, to get the promise, God said, this is what I will do. There is a condition here. You do this, I will do this. I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make thee thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. It's the promises of the Lord. Here's a man 75 years old. Amen. He, he don't have any children yet, but God is saying, I will make you a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Here is the promises of God. God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Also in 2 Peter 3 and 9, it says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. If God told you, you can count on it. I told you before, if, you, if God tell you something, you can bank on it. Amen. He said, listen, you will be blessed. Verse 3 says, I will bless them that bless thee. I got to slow down. Now, Ab Abram, if he knew what God said, he going to be blessed. He knew what God said, his name is going to be great. Amen. He knew what God said, thou shalt be blessed. Now he's even dealing with God is dealing with other people blessing and cursing Abram. He says, I will bless them that bless thee, right. and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. To be blessed is to invoke God's favor. You want to invoke God's favor. Amen. Be a blessing to someone else. Don't be a curse, but be a blessing unto someone else. Invoke the favor of God upon somebody. Confess prosperity and happiness upon someone else. Because when you curse somebody, they come back to you. Refer to a harm and some injury and some type of punishment. Abraham see his family will be blessed. Be a blessing to someone else. Serve somebody else. Amen. Give somebody else a glass of water sometime. Help somebody else along this journey. Because I don't know about you, but I want to be blessed and I want to bless somebody else. Amen. Amen. Verse number four. And Abram, he did something. Abram did something in verse number four. And I heard everything in verse one, two, three. He heard, you got to leave, you got to declutter, you got to declutter your life and get going. You do this, you will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. Now, he told him in the fourth verse, he said, listen, so Abram departed. Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him and locked it with him. And Abram his set was, was 75 years old when he departed on him. Now, Abram departed. And so what that tells me, that Abram didn't put up no fuss, but he left. And he did what God would have him to do. He began to shift. He began to move. He even packed up his stuff and put it in the second gear. Uh, he didn't ask no question. There was no doubt. There was no fear. There was no apprehension. There was no no. There was no, I got to check with somebody. I got to check with this one. I got to check with this one. Abram said, it's time for me to go. Let's get on the body here. And what Abram did, he began to move. When God takes the moon, you got to go ahead and move. When Abram took his wife, Seth, he took his nephew, and he took all his substance that he had, and all the souls and servants that was connected to him that would go, and he got himself up out of hand, and he 
and he went to the land of Canaan. The Bible lets us know that Abram went. He moved from one place to another. First thing when it comes to the spiritual matters. I got my bag here and I'm ready to go. Wherever the Lord takes me, I'm ready to go. Doesn't matter what somebody else says. I didn't get put up my stuff. I didn't got myself ready. I got my bag brother ready. And I'm ready to go. When the Lord said it's time to move, get your bag packed and let's move. When the Lord say it's time to go on a journey, let's go on a journey. We weren't ready to leave the church, but the Lord allowed this COVID-19 to hit us in March. And we had to leave the church, but that's all right, because thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I will go into all the world and preach the gospel. Lord, when you send me, I will go. I thank God for the ship. I thank God for the move of the Lord. For having faith in God, somebody say yeah, say yeah. Pick up your bags, pick up your belongings, and move in the Lord. Holy Ghost, you'll lead me. Holy Ghost, you'll guide me. Land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles. 
was with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him of the same. God wants us to step out on faith. And put that gear in the second gear. Okay. You, can't, you can't get on the highway in first gear. You get on the street. What's my truck driving? The, the Mario truck driving? You, you, you get out there going eight miles, trying to go eight miles mile in first gear. Yeah. It ain't gonna work. Huh? You gotta, you gotta get into second gear and third gear and fourth gear and, and, and so forth and so on. I don't know how many years of semi truck now, but you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get out on I ninety doing seven, trying to do seven mile an hour in first gear. You got to have faith that when I shift gears, huh? When I shift gears, I can go a little faster. I can go a little further. God is calling us. Even as a church, to shift gears. Right. And we're going to shift gears together. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God a hand, praise. If you would stand with me. God bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, oh God. I've given your people what you have given me, oh God. To shift, to shift gears into second gear. Lord, that you were blessed that we have heard your word. Not only have we heard your word, but we want to be doers of your word, oh God. To take this ministry higher in the Lord. And that we will shift together in the name of Jesus. Now there may be someone here on this morning. Someone here that does not know the Lord in the Come 
all tell them thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And for we are not so happy, pray tell them hallelujah. God bless you. If you would take your seat, we want to, amen, have the deacons come together.